Thank you so much. I uh, am really grateful to the gentleman for yielding, but also for organizing this special order on something that really is special. Who is going to sit on the, uh, on the Supreme Court, and how do we deal with uh, Judge Neil Gorsuch's nomination? Of course, he, we in the House uh, don't have a, uh, a vote, but we certainly do have the privilege to be able to weigh in on something as important as this in this manner. So I do appreciate the opportunity. Um, Judge Gorsuch's nomination to the Supreme Court is the latest battle in the Republicans' war on women and workers. I, I uh, will find myself agreeing and probably repeating some of what Congresswoman Jayapal has said, but I think it bears, it bears repeating. But first of all, let me say we should make no mistake. This is a stolen Supreme Court seat. Senate Republicans demonstrated unprecedented, meaning never before in history, disrespect for the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and our Constitution by denying Judge Merrick Garland a vote or even a hearing when he was put into nomination by President Obama. That has never, ever happened before in our history. Last year, Republicans ignored their constitutional duty by denying Judge Garland a hearing. And by the way, he had been approved by the, the Congress in the past for a seat on the district court. Um, and he had praise on both sides of the aisle. So it wasn't a question of his being qualified or not. It was they did not want the ability of Barack Obama to even nominate someone and have him considered for the, uh, for the Supreme Court. So now they want to break the rules of the Senate to rush their own nominee through. This is a nomination to the United States Supreme Court, the highest body in the land, the highest court in the land. The decisions the next justice takes, takes part in will affect Americans for decades, if not centuries, because it could set precedent. Given the importance of this position, senators have the right to insist on a 60-vote threshold for ending the debate on the nominee. And Senate Democrats should insist on 60 votes because Judge Gorsuch has demonstrated time and time again that he has put the interest of corporations above Americans, I'll describe that later, whether it's worker safety or a woman's access even to contraception. So I'm going to talk a minute about, about women. President Trump said he would nominate a judge to overturn Roe versus Wade, the 1973 decision that said as a matter of privacy that women could make their own decisions about terminating a pregnancy. And women take that threat very seriously. Judge Gorsuch talked about precedents he likes, like Brown versus Board of Education, integrating the schools. I agree with him on that. But tellingly, when he mentioned the precedents that he reveres, he certainly did not give Roe versus Wade the same status. Judge Gorsuch's dis judicial record should add to our concern. After the Tenth Circuit panel ruled against a Utah's, the, the state of Utah's attempt to defund Planned Parenthood following the release of deceptively edited videos, Judge Gorsuch called for the full court to hear the case, presumably to overturn the decision. Judge Gorsuch was in the minority in this instance, and his request was dismissed. In the Ho Hobby Lobby case, Judge Gorsuch sided against women, allowing bosses to deny their women employees contraception as part of health coverage. In many other cases, and, and now I want to talk a little bit about workers, in many other cases, Judge Gorsuch, Gorsuch has prioritized the interest of employers over the rights of workers. He blocked a woman in Colorado from going to trial on sexual harassment claims 
because she didn't report the harassment quickly enough. Judge Gorsuch denied a professor with leukemia at Kansas State University protections under the Rehabilitation Act. He sided with a mining company after a worker was electrocuted due to inadequate safety training. He sided with a trucking company that fired a trucker driving through Illinois, that's my state, who decided to leave his broken trailer instead of freezing to death, literally. The, 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 the truck was down, couldn't get started, and his choice was to sit there with the truck or to be able to go to safety in, below, in, in, freezing, in freezing temperatures. Fortunately for workers, Judge Gorsuch was in the minority in some of those cases. But we can't count on him being in the minority once he's on the Supreme Court. His dangerous anti-woman, anti-worker views should not be elevated to our highest court. So I urge my Democratic colleagues in the Senate to stand strong against the Gorsuch nomination. And to Senate Republicans, it was disrespectful to the Constitution to block Judge Garland. And you know what? I'm not even saying necessarily that he would have been approved. But to not even offer him a hearing or a vote was disrespectful to our Constitution, and it's disrespectful to the traditions of the Senate to force Judge Gorsuch through now. We don't want to break the rules to get one nominee through, especially not a nominee who puts critical protections for Americans at risk. Women are watching, workers are watching, and on Friday, all Americans will, uh, will, will know whose side that the Senate is on and whose side the Senate Republicans are on. Everyone is paying attention.